Good morning. Um, I have a question related to uh, the bond market, the U.S. Treasury bond market. Uh, my name is Ole Larsen. I live in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, I never worked in the financial industry. I started out buying uh, penny mining stocks on the Vancouver Stock Exchange, and then a decade later I got married, and my wife convinced me to buy Berkshire shares. Uh, that was probably a good decision. <laughs> so, so my, my question is, um, um, I, read that, I read the newspapers about uh, the Federal Reserve and uh, the inflation numbers, and uh, there must be an increased supply of treasury bonds that must go to, to auction. And my question is, how would, how, what do you expect that to um, impact uh, yield or interest rate? Yeah, well, the answer is, I don't know. And the good news is nobody else knows, uh, including members of the Federal Reserve and everybody. It, 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 there are a lot of variables in the, in the picture. And the one thing we know is we think that long-term bonds are a terrible investment. And uh, we, at, at current rates or anything close to current rates, uh, so basically all of our money that is waiting to be placed is, is, in, is in treasury bills that I think have an average maturity of four months or something like that at most. Uh, the rates on those have gone up lately so that in 2018, my guess is we'll have at least $500 million more of pre-tax income than we would have had from the bills uh, last year. Uh, but they still, it's not because we want to hold them, we're waiting to do something else, but long-term bonds, uh, they're basically at these rates. It's almost ridiculous when you think about it because here the Federal Reserve Board is telling you we want 2% a year inflation, and the very long bond is not much more than 3%. And of course, if you're an individual and you pay tax on it, uh, you're going to have some income taxes to pay. And let's say it brings your after-tax return down to 2.5%. So the Federal Reserve is telling you that they're going to do whatever's in their power to make sure that you don't get more than a half a percent a year uh, of inflation adjusted income, and uh, that seems to me a very, I wouldn't go back to penny stocks, since, but I think I would stick with, I would stick with productive businesses or productive, certain other productive assets uh, uh, by far. But what the bond market does in the next year, you know, you've got trillions of dollars uh, in the hands of people that are trying to guess which maturity would be the best to own and all that sort of thing. And we do not bring anything to that game that would allow us to think that we've got an edge. Charlie? Well, it really wasn't fair for our monetary authorities to reduce the savings rates paid mostly to our old people with savings accounts as much as they did. But they probably had to do it to fight the Great Recession appropriately. But it, it clearly wasn't fair, and the conditions were weird. In my whole lifetime, it's only happened once that interest rates went down so low and stayed low for a long time. And it was quite unfair to a lot of people, and it benefited the people in this room enormously because it drove asset prices up, including the price of Berkshire Hathaway stock. So we're all a bunch of undeserving people, and, and I hope that we continue to be so. <laughs> At the time this newspaper came out in 1942, the, it was the government was pe appealing to the patriotism of everybody. As kids, we went to school and we bought saving stamps to put in. Well, they first called them U.S. war bonds, then they called them U.S. defense bonds, and then they called them U.S. savings bonds. <laughs> but they were called war bonds then. 
and you put up $18.75, and you got back $25 in 10 years. And that's when I learned that that $4 for three uh, in 10 years was 2.9% compounded. They had to put in small print that, and, and even an 11-year-old could understand that 2.9% compounded uh, for 10 years was not a good investment. But we all we all bought them. It was it was you know it was part of the war effort basically, uh, and the government. Knew, I mean, you knew that significant inflation was coming from what was taking place in finance in World War II. We actually were on a massive Keynesian type behavior, not because we elected to follow Keynes, but because war forced us to have this huge deficit in our finances, which took our debt up to 120 percent of GDP. And it was the great Keynesian experiment of all time, and we backed into it, and it sent us on a wave of prosperity like we've never seen. So you get some accidental benefits sometimes. But the United States government then was urging every citizen to put their money into a fixed dollar investment at 2.9 percent compounded for 10 years. And, and uh, I think Treasury bonds have been unattractive ever since, <laughs> with the exception of the early 80s. That was something at, at that time. I mean, you, you really had a chance to, to buy. You had a chance to invest your money by buying zero coupon treasury bonds and, in effect, guarantee yourself that for 30 years you would get a, a compounded return, you know, of some, something like 14 percent for 30 years of your lifetime. So the, every now and then something really strange happens in markets. and. And the trick is to not only be prepared, but to take action when it happens.